Um, yeah, so I had counselling and I had cognitive behaviour therapy and they're really helpful things. And I think what was helpful about them is they helped me deal with the symptoms. So I wasn't really able to eat really in the day and I would be sick every morning before I left the house. And I I'd sort of developed a lot of um, safety behaviours, which are like things that you do to try and help make yourself feel safe when you don't feel very safe. So for me, I would like carry polos and rescue remedy and a brown paper bag because sometimes I'd had panic attacks and I thought if I had that with me, it might prevent another panic attack but then in the sort of CBT she would kind of say well in a way you're sort of setting yourself up to have another um it's sort of counterproductive isn't it? it's kind of chicken and egg but I guess it was a helpful way of looking at my behaviors and helping me just become a bit self-aware of what things might trigger it for me and I got a diagnosis then in my I think it was my early 20s which was um generalized anxiety disorder which basically meant I was anxious most of the time about anything at all which in some ways was helpful and in other ways just I kind of remember thinking it'd be really helpful if I knew the thing that I was really anxious about because then I could sort of avoid it even though that wouldn't have necessarily helped um so I guess it was quite it to an extent it was life limiting in that it, it prevented me from doing lots of things but I would still try and go to work and I would still try and live life but I sort of put things in place to try and make that easier um and I remember probably yeah, I just sort of lived like that for quite a while. And sometimes it would be worse and sometimes it would be better. Um, it was quite up and down. And then being at church about seven years ago and um, having some prayer, not even related to that, but God just sort of began a bit of work in my life. And, and somebody that prayed for me said, um, it's now time to live out from under the shadow. And I remember at the time feeling a little bit like, well, what on earth does that mean? <laughs> um, but I guess God just began to kind of bring me into this journey where I sought him more. And I remember just having some like, times of prayer at home in my bedroom just sitting on my bed and I remember it was probably at that point I really invited God into the journey of anxiety and I'd say up to that point it was almost like I was walking in parallel with God so I did have a relationship with God but I wasn't necessarily inviting him in to change that area of my life at all because I don't think I really had faith to believe that he could and um yeah I just had some moments with God and I remember one particular one where I just said um you know God I don't want this anymore um, it's really debilitating it's really holding me back in my life and I remember God just saying to me not in an audible voice but in a kind of voice in my thoughts like in my mind where I think I just felt like God say do you trust me and I remember saying yes and then I just had this encounter really with the Holy Spirit where I felt like he began to to change that and shift that from where it had been like a real kind of stronghold in my life and had dominated everything he started to kind of change that and it wasn't like an instant thing like in that moment but it was a process of maybe over about six weeks just lots of time just being with God and praying and my husband praying me one time as well and um yeah I find that um the fear and the anxiety lost its hold on me now I'm not saying that ever since then I've been completely fear free or um that it never comes and tries to knock at the door because it does but I would say that it doesn't dominate my life now it's not um it's not even a thing that's conscious so much in my mind. And I remember at the time, God really gave me the verse um, in Zephaniah 3.17. Does someone fancy reading that, actually, just to break up me talking the whole time? Someone, anyone fancy finding that in the Bible? <laughs> fancy doing it, Poppy? Is that right? Zephaniah 3.17. Thanks. So this was a verse that um, my husband and I set up like a 24-7 prayer room at our church. I remember being in it around the same time, just sort of praying and saying, God, what are you doing? And... I felt like him give me this verse, which encouraged me. Over to Poppy. The Lord God is with you, the mighty warrior who saves. He will take great delight in you. In his love, he will no longer rebuke you, but will rejoice over you with singing. Thank you. And in another version, it says, um, in his love, you will calm all your fears and I guess just this sense of actually God re reminding me that God was in control of my life and the things that had kind of dominated me and my identity and who I was actually was sort of slowly being taken away. And what was really interesting, I think, about that journey is that actually in some ways after he began that work, it was a bit um, strange because I'd almost say like I'd lived in quite a confined space for up to like nearly 30 years. And then him taking that away meant that I felt a little bit lost. And I guess the last sort of seven, eight years has been a bit of a journey of finding out who I am without the fear and the anxiety and, and the other layers of it and the other stuff that is there. And I guess we're all on a journey of learning about ourselves and about how God's made us and the things that hold us back. But um, 
I guess my encouragement is just that, um, yeah, that I'm still working out with God and I'm still on a journey, but I have seen him change me and I have seen him um, renew my mind, which, you know, the Bible talks about us asking God to renew our mind and it's like a daily thing. And I have to be really aware of that. And sometimes, you know, in lockdown particularly, that's something that maybe I struggle with more. Um, but I think, yeah, the encouragement that actually my life changed a lot when I invited God in and invited God to to change me and to show me things about myself that actually he wanted to change. And I guess just the last thing is the kind of, I guess, understanding God's heart for us, that actually God loves us unconditionally and that, that our identity comes from him and not from the thing that we struggle with or from the stuff that maybe holds us back. Um, and yeah, that we have authority um, to kind of, yeah, tell that stuff not to be there anymore. And I think, um, I think a real key for me, like if I was to give like my top tip for finding freedom, I think actually often it's a bit in Psalm 139 towards the end, it says to, that we can say to God, you know, examine our heart, show us if there's any offensive way in us. And I think that's the key, like asking God to give us revelation. I think for me, for so many years, I didn't even really realise that. I mean, I guess I knew that something wasn't quite right, but I didn't really fully figure that God wanted to be involved in it or that he could do something about it. So I think actually inviting God in, and letting him see us is, is really helpful in that and um I think as well just being aware of like any internal kind of voices that you might have like sometimes I've got quite an internal critical voice where I'll say stuff about myself that's not very nice and not very helpful and it's not true but I think sometimes we can all kind of partner with those sort of thoughts or those lies and um actually asking God is there a lie I'm believing at the moment about myself or about you and being able to actually give that to God and ask him what the truth is has been really key. And that's still something, again, that I'd say I'm working out and, and learning. But um, yeah, those are probably my main things. And the last bit is Romans 12, verse 2, where it talks about us um, coming to God and asking him to renew our mind. I think that is so key because our minds can get messy. <laughs> and um, I think that's why God says that we need to you know come to him and ask him to renew it so hopefully that's helpful that's kind of a very fast <laughs> overview of my life in uh five or six minutes but i don't want to yeah just talk at you too much so is that all right yeah that's amazing um i'll probably pause that